entering data for filter contingency screening questions. Okay, so this continues on the series of questionnaire data entry, beginning with my first video on questionnaire data entry and continuing on with Likert scale input. So I'm going to assume that you've watched both these videos. Right, so a filter question, otherwise known as screening, otherwise known as contingency, or it might be known by other things. These type of questions look like this. So during your stay in hospital, did you have an operation or procedure? Yes or no? Now notice this is a nominal, uh, nominal scale. If you answer yes, you go to question 42. If you answer no, you go to question 49. So in other words, this questionnaire directs you to different parts of uh, the questionnaire depending on how you answer. And this is, uh, so this type of question is known as a filter question. And you might wish to use something like this. So you might want to wish something like this, use something like this if you want to find out more about a subset of your, of the, of the uh, respondents who answer a particular question. See the people who go on to answer 42 um, questions that they answer will be irrelevant to the person who answers no on this. Okay. Um, so a person who answers yes here that they did have an operation or procedure then 42 would be relevant. Did a member of staff explain the risks uh, of the operation in a way you could understand? But if you didn't have an operation obviously question 42 would not be relevant. So maybe you need something like this in your questionnaire whether it be marketing or psychology or anything, something, something, all right? So I'm going to show you how to set up uh, your your SPSS window to accept data like this. All right, this is question 41 and this is 42. So let's do 41 first. Go to SPSS and go to variable view. I'll give it a name. Well, it's question 41, so let's just 41. Uh, decimals I'm going to set to zero. Label. All right, this is the sentence of the thing that of the full question. So, okay. During your stay, did did you have an operation? Okay. And the answer is yes or no. One for yes, add, and two for no. And we add, and then okay. I'm going to assume here they've got no missing values. I did show you in the the other two videos how to deal with missing values. Clearly, this uh, is a is a nominal measure, so we'll change it there. Okay, then we'll go into question forty-two, right? Um, and we'll set up in a similar way. I won't do for forty-nine because it's the same principle. I'll just keep this simple. So forty-two, and the answer is yes. Completely understand yes to some extent and no. Alright, so we're going to call that one, two, three. Question 42. So one for completely, two for meaning to some extent, Three for no, did not understand. And we haven't exactly completed this yet, but I'm just going to come back to this later on and I'll tell you why. All right, so we're pretty much set up, except for uh, this uh, the, the question 42, which is not completely done yet, but I'll come back to this. Okay. So let's say the first person answered yes. All right. So in which case, question forty-two would be relevant. Did you? Uh, uh, how much of the risk did you um, understand? Um, let's say completely. So that's one as well. Okay. Question. And yeah. And uh, second person say no. So in this case, that's really irrelevant. So we don't answer anything there because the person who answered no for question 41 goes to question 49. 
does not answer question 42. So let's leave that blank for now. Third person say yes, uh, let's say to some extent. Fourth person say yes to some extent. Let's say person say yes, um, none. Let's say question so person six says no. So again, that's irrelevant. All right. Okay, so these dots, do I leave them blank? Uh, it's best not to leave them blank. So what do I do? Well, see, these blanks mean it's not applicable to the person because they answered no on question 41. So we should set up a NA, not applicable. So I'm going to choose it here to do it here, values. I'm going to code it for, and it's uh, not applicable. Okay, four and four. And if we don't like to see the code, we want to see the actual uh, the, the labels, we'll click on this icon here, one to A. There you go. Person answered yes, completely understands. No, not applicable, tense question 42, and so on. Okay, so this is pretty much what it looks like. Now, how do I analyze something like this? Well, if we look at question 42, Say I just want to look at the frequency table. Display frequencies. Say six valid responses, because we've got six respondents here. And the frequency, uh, so completely understand one. Yes. Let's All right, that's easy to understand. To some extent, right out of forty question forty two, two people answered to some extent, so that's two. That's good, right? No, uh, there's one person. All right, uh, not applicable, two people. So that's what it says. That adds up to hundred percent. Right, that's one thing you could do. But suppose you're, so you would say that you know out of the respondents, uh, about thirty three percent. Did not answer this question 42 because it was not applicable to them, and uh, uh, and so on. But suppose you want to make the sentence of the type out of the people who uh, had an operation. In other words, out of the people who answered question 41, said yes to 41, blah blah blah. Then what you want to do is you want to change this by filtering out only the people who said yes. How do you do that? You go to select cases, so you've got to go to data and select cases down here, or quicker to use this icon right here because it's too bad. Select cases. Okay, and we'll click if and then question one, take that over, equals one. Uh, so I did this beforehand, so let me kind of can I cancel that to show you how I do that. So do you on your stay at question 41, take that over, press the equal sign 1. That means out the, for the people who answered yes to question 41. Continue. OK. And watch what happens. You can see that there's a strikeout on case 2 because that person answered no to 41. And the strikeout on case 6 because that person answered no to 41. So, and then we've got a new column called filter, which shows us what has been selected, what data has been selected. So basically, all cases 1 to 6, except for 2 and 6. And now if we redo the analysis, analyze descriptive stats frequency, and just say OK again, look how the output changes. So now before it was six that was valid, now there's only four that's valid because it struck out two. So now we can say our sentence would be out of the people who had an operation, uh, half, 50% it says here, uh, said they understand, stood to some extent the risks they were undertaking. All right, so that's how it changes your sentence. Changes it to out of everyone to out of the people who answered uh, yes to question 41. And uh, that's uh, that's ba that's basically it. That's um, filter questions. Um, not used so much by undergrads I've ever seen, but uh, hey, you might be the first one in your college to use it. Okay, good luck.